Hi, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.2 demo for the piece I call Somebody Save Kenny. So this here is Kenny, and he recently joined a book club. He's met a lot of new people, taught him some things. He's changed his perspective on some stuff. So let's get going on talking about how I painted him. Uh, if you can sort of see, it says Mr. End back there, and he is already pre-drawn. This was actually a character I drew at Sketch Bomb a long time ago. He was supposed to be more like the the villain to like a detective comic or something, like an old detective uh, story. Um, and then I'm sort of, I sort of retrofitted him for for this. Um, so the actual uh, paint style for this one is something that you guys have seen me do a million times. I basically am just color blocking, then after color blocking I'm color picking and just choosing my colors and going through and painting it. Uh, where we're at in the stage right now is he's already been flatted and I was kind of thinking about taking him down this angle of like almost like he's like a really creepy hitman or something uh, and I wanted him kind of like mob-ish but almost like gothic mob uh, that's why he's got the green shirt and I and you'll see as this goes it sort of develops in different ways and he gets like crazy colors but then he goes to more normal colors and that's just me trying to sort of find where how I wanted to complete his story I guess you could say as far as the brushes that I used I just used the hard circle brush with uh, uh, for to lay down the paint you can sort of see it there you can see how heavy it is um, and then I use the soft eraser uh, like the soft airbrush to knock back the parts that I paint in too heavily and then I sort of want to pull them back and soften them um, and that is what I used for a lot of this um, I believe there's some times where I'm messing with the hair or something where I might tweak the brush or change brushes but uh, for the most part it's just those two brushes now you can also see because of the coloration of his face and his neck that I've got his neck and his head on two separate layers. Uh, actually on that neck layer, now it just changed, on that neck layer is also his distant ear and that's just really layer management and trying to keep certain things separate so that I can control it better. Um, as you can see too, his coloring is starting to get really undead looking or really almost like Marilyn Manson-y and that's not ultimately where I wanted him to go. So I, if I remember correctly, because I actually did this piece like over a month ago now, um, I, I have a bit of uh, identity problems I guess you could say with my colors on this one. Eventually it all comes around and it becomes something that I quite like, uh, but there was a struggle point for sure and I think that's what we're witnessing here. Uh, in time lapse is me struggling with what I wanted the palette of his skin to be. I'm gonna shut up for a bit now though because this is all just repetitive putting down some paint, erasing away, putting down some paint, erasing away, changing colors, uh, and then I'll come back in when things get more interesting. I wanted to keep him pale I knew I was going to struggle with definition in some areas so I added 
this uh, shadow here to make the nose more pronounced. I just did it by painting it in solid and then using the eraser to soften it. That way I could get that precise line where the actual nose is and then soften it out as it fades away. And then blush added in the usual way, just a opaque pink with the opacity then lowered. Um, the eyes, the darkness around the eyes is just done with a very light gray purple set to multiply. The five o'clock shadow is, uh, that one is not any type of layer effects, it's just as it is, you see it painted right there and then its opacity is lowered quite a bit. And now here we're just adding some darkening to the lips because I wanted the lips to be um, more pronounced and more, um, I don't know, just kind of off-putting. And so now we're into the eyes. Um, I add the dark eyelashes, which I usually do just to draw more contrast to the eyes, but in his case it sort of just fits his look. I wanted him to have these cold, dead-looking eyes, like he's obviously intensely looking, but they, they're that dead gray kind of look. Um, and then we make sure that we make them look nice and wet, so a little bit of the like tears sort of collecting at the bottom there. Have the bounce light coming up from his skin, since his skin is so bright. Put those nice shines on them, and that really makes them start looking really glassy. I put a drop shadow coming off of his hair, because I had sort of painted his skin all, um, I mean, not diffused, like sort of, it's, uh, it's, it's, local shadow that's not really the word I'm looking for I'm getting all my terms mixed up but all you need to know is I just had sort of the form and then those are the cast shadows from the hair and then the mouth which just went by I just really wanted to sell how dark and cavernous his mouth was especially with that light coming down from the top and then I kept his hair really simple especially since it's all dark anyways I don't really want the attention to be going to the hair Here's where we start putting in a background, like it's almost like this mafioso, you know, red wallpapery thing. Um, and then at this point I'm starting to feel like that's not actually going to work. Uh, I'm painting this green, but I know I can color shift any of these individual layers to whatever I need them to be. So it really doesn't matter what I paint them right now as long as I know that I'll adjust it to something that makes sense eventually. I just remembered that I was watching the second Three Ninjas movie while I was painting this. I don't know why. It was like on, it was just on, it was like, on, and I don't mean on like TV, it was like on Netflix and I clicked on it because I was, I don't know, I have no excuse. I watched that whole movie. Anyways, now we're moving on to the tie. You can see from the colors that I'm choosing here uh, that I'm going for a little bit of like a, you know, he's a, he's a weirdo, he's choosing weird colors, um, but eventually this all gets changed to a much less interesting color scheme, and that's basically because I don't want that to be the story. I don't want this guy's like goofy suits to be the story, I want him to be the story. And then I eventually come up with the idea for the like, hi, my name is badge, and then that gives me the entire story that I'm looking for. So you can see here I'm adding some texture to the soup but keeping it pretty simple and then I threw that lined texture um, on there which is one of the brushes in Photoshop. It's, it's one of the pattern brushes or something. Which I just used that on another rough sketch so I'm clearly gonna have to start using something different because I've used it twice now. Um, here I'm doing some extra shadows because I felt like the dimension of his face and neck particularly his neck, wasn't that good. In fact, I struggled quite a bit with his neck, and then I realized that the whole thing should mostly be in shadow anyways because of this top-down light. So at this point, you might have seen me toy earlier in the recording with the idea of a cast shadow across him, um, but then I decided to go with this, uh, just a direct light coming down. Um, I bring the cross back in, the upside-down cross on his forehead. Even though he was a specific character before, I thought it'd be fun to play with this notion of um, him getting wrapped up in some sort of a cult kind of on accident. Uh, here I wanted to make it kind of look like it was a uh, painting that had a gloss over it, so I used one of the brushes, it might have even been like the hair brush, and I just uh, set it to white and I stroked it up and down as if I were 
painting on a gloss at the end and then set it to overlay and then I found certain spots of that where I added extra white like it was catching some light just a little bit like the surface was catching some light uh, now here's just a rim light to pop his shapes out make them a little bit stronger You'll see a bunch of stuff start to flash by because at this point in the piece, this is where I start thinking about extra little adjustments that's going to sell things like a little blur here or a little bloom there. Maybe I'll take all the highs and blur them a little bit and, and only delete away the part of that bloom that's not in the shadows. Excuse me. Yeah, that's not in the shadows. That way the bloom is encroaching on the shadows but not blurring anything else. So there's lots of little things happening here. Um, and then we zoom in because I decide to really emphasize that light coming in from the top so we give it a little bit of a uh, direct rim light from that light up there which also gives me the opportunity to put in little flyaway hairs which you'll see uh, in the final piece it's hard to see here in the recording some of these little hairs that are stringy sort of breaking away from the main shape of his hair you'll also notice that there's sort of like an, a weird thing going on where I've got like these painterly sort of blurs going on like around the edge of his ear and I'll actually show you how I did that at the end here. So now here turning on all these extra layers trying to get some extra texture in the uh, suit just trying to really bring this in it's that thing where it's like the last bit of tricks really uh, fixes everything. So I looked up a uh, hello my name is badge and then essentially replicated it um, just repainted it so that I could manipulate it a little bit more easily. I like the idea too of, you know, similar to that old uh, Batman Returns joke where it says like, hello there, and then it says like, hell here. I thought it'd be funny to have it say, you know, hello, my name is, but then somebody just took like a ballpoint pen, and, like scratched out the O on hello. So it says like, hell, my name is um, just, you know, to reinforce this idea of this sort of like silly group of uh, like satanic worshipers or whatever it is. Kenny just wanted to meet some new people. Somebody's got to go save Kenny. So we get that badge, that sticker in there. Make sure that it's got the right uh, lighting treatment. It's dark. It's folded into the illustration. And uh, that is the end of it. That is the end of Kenny. There were some things in here that were really normal and other things that I did that were really new. So let's go over one of those new things right now. Uh, let's take this old piece I did of uh, Boss, uh, Big Boss from the Metal Gear series. You can see it's pretty sharp overall. What I'm going to do is show you how I did that painterly blur trick. Um, it was actually something I came up with in that piece and I've used it a couple times since and I'm pretty into the look of it so I'll be using it a little bit more. So I duplicate that layer and then do a Gaussian blur on it so that you have a blur just like that. Then attach a mask to it tap on the thumbnail and then tap mask and white means that you can see and black means that you can't see so we're gonna fill that whole layer in black so that now that entire blurred layer is gone it visibly gone it's it's there though switch to a white brush and go with something that's sort of like a very stylistic painty looking brush like here we're gonna use the old brush and now if you're painting white in the mask, it's going to reveal some of that blur, but it's only going to reveal it where you're brushing. So you can see here that you get this sort of smudge effect that's got a texture, but you're actually not smudging. You're just sort of bringing that blur through um, and you're bringing that blur through with the shape of the brush. So it's kind of a fun little thing you can see here. I'm just messing with it so you can see what it does. Um, and when you, when you see the really tight version, the really clean version of the Kenny piece as we pan across it, I think you'll see um, how cool it looks when it's at full resolution. So again, that's Kenny. He's all complete. And uh, here's the pan over. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.